All right, everyone, we may have a few other people join, but we'll go ahead and get started here. Uh, the recording for this meeting has begun. It's currently 12.02 p.m. on April 18th, 2024. And this is the online virtual pre-proposal conference for the home energy rebate programs application and implementation. Thank you, Aaron. All right, yeah, let's get started. Welcome everybody. Thank you so much for joining us today. As Aaron said, uh, this is the pre-proposal conference for the Home Energy Rebate Programs Applications and Implementations, RFP. I am Bettina Burgu. I'm the Associate Director for Energy Efficiency and Financing at Virginia Department of Energy. Uh, and thanks to the team for continuing to admit people. Uh, we have other key folks today that are part of the solicitation. We have uh, my colleague Haja Dumbuya. She is the Home Energy Rebate Programs Manager here. We have uh, Jackie Lynch, whose name you've seen. Uh, she is our procurement officer here and the procurement lead for this RFP. And we also have Erin Bowling, who is our agency's director of IT. Uh, everyone, please stay muted. Uh, if you don't, we will, uh, but certainly there will be an opportunity for you to come off mute and ask questions as part of this conference um, and as Jackie will talk more about. Uh, I will, once I finish this info or this intro, I will put a link to the solicitation on Eva in the chat, just so everybody has that handy, but hopefully you have already had a chance to take a look at the documents. I did want to just mention that, of course, key documents related to the home energy rebates uh, is this the RFP documents, but we do also have some other related uh, materials and will have more related materials uh, to the home energy rebates on the Virginia Energy website. So I'll put those links in the chat as well. We have a frequently asked questions page about the IRA home energy rebates, and then we also have um, some more materials related to our planning on our public notices page. And as we have anything else related to our planning that might be of interest, uh, you can go back to that public notices page uh, to view those materials. So I'll put those in the chat. And I think with that all being said, I'll hand it over to Jackie. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to our optional pre-proposal conference for the home energy rebate program application and implementation today is just an overall if we got any questions um we'll address them now if you don't get to attend if you got questions you have until the 26th april the 26th to get questions into me so i can give them to the group to discuss and at one time we will do an addendment on the EVA website with all the questions and answers at one time because every time that we do a answer a question it adds 10 more days to the ending of the proposal so as of right now we had it scheduled to close on May the 21st but we already know it's going to be May 31st because we're doing this question answer thing so it's going to add 10 days to the closing so how we're going to do this is that uh, we're going to go over the proposal and we're going to say page one do you have any questions page two do you have any questions we'll do it that way we think it'd be more organized to sort of have control of it that way to when we could get all the questions down and stuff like that so we can make sure we get it exactly how it's asked and to be able to answer it correctly so at the end I, after we go over that and we we got the attachments uh we're not going to go page by page of the attachments but we will say attachment one and tell you what it is and see if anybody has any questions on that and we'll address it that way so and then again if you have any questions at the end we'll take them on that perfect thank you so much for that and as required by the procurement manual, we are going to need to go around and do introductions of everybody who's attending. So I know we have a number of phone numbers on the line. This is going to be super fun. Uh, please bear with us as we go through this. Um, and at the end, I'll ask if we missed anybody. 
So I'll just start with the names that we see in alphabetical order. Uh, Chad, and please state your name and just your affiliation. Chad Cruz. Hi, I'm Chad Cruz. I'm with Utility API, a data service provider. Chase Counts. Hi, everyone. Uh, Chase Counts. I'm attending on behalf of Greenbound Consulting. Jennifer Cornell. Hi, I'm Jennifer Cornell Honeywell. David Gelman. Hi, I'm Dave Gelman with BEIC. If you're the meeting organizer, press Michael Daisy. Hi, everyone. Mike Daisy here um, with Honeywell. Moni? Or, um, Dubin? Moni? Hi, my name is Dubin, Dubin Moni, and I am with Guidos Incorporations. Felix. Hey, everybody. Felix Martinez with Guidehouse. Uh, Kate. Finnerty. Hi, Kate Finnerty from Accenture. Sydney Gillum. Sydney Gillum with IEM. Aaron Gold. Yeah, hi, Aaron Gold with Honeywell. Karakaya Kamal, or Kamal Karakaya. Hello, good afternoon. Kemal Karakaya, Guidehouse. Kevin Killiam. Kevin Quilliam with Incline. Tim Lagudi. Good afternoon, Tim Lagudi with IEM. Uh, Gibby Little. Hey, this is Gibby Little with Honeywell. Lloyd Cass. Hey, this is Lloyd Cass, uh, Franklin Energy. Sorry, I couldn't get off mute fast. <laughs> You're good. Kadeem Locke. Hey, it's Kadeem Locke, and it's from Aptom. Maddie Kohler. Maddie Kohler with Nazio. Mark Hervey. Mark Hervey, clear results. David Meisegeier. Hello, with ICF. Samantha Neubauer. Hi, I'm Sam with PRC. Mitchell Perret. Hi, Mitch Perret with Honeywell. Rob Dunn. Hey, Rob Dunn, McKinsey. McKinsey. Uh, Ian Stewart. Hi, from uh, ICF. Sukumar Rao. Sukumar Rao from Parnin Group. Suzanne Pasternak. Hello, Suzanne Pasternak from Guidehouse. And Allison Villette. Good afternoon, Allison with IEM. Perfect. All right, we've got some phone numbers here, so I will read out the first six in hopes that that is clear enough. We've got a 202-215. Hi there, Ariano Ogliano, Center for Climate Strategies. 336-244. Mark Gentry, Franklin Energy. 401-738. Hi there, Mike Marnix, ICF. 402-880. Tracy Stromquist from IEM. 413, oh no, 658. Ben Bunker, Pearl Certification. 586419. Emilia Ansfall, Franklin Energy. Mm -hmm. 703559. Is there someone at 703-559 number? Yes. Can you state your name and affiliation? John English, Heartland Energy Partners. Perfect, thank you, John. 773-255. Joel Freeling, Aptum. 804677. Could you state your name and affiliation? Thank you. 
may be driving safely. That's fine. Uh, 804 814. Megan Partridge with Franklin Energy. 804 929. Uh, Angie Schuler, Guide Health. 833-275. Is there someone at 833-275 number? Can you state your name? All right. I know they heard a lot of pings. Is there anyone who joined that hasn't stated your name and affiliation. I see one, uh, Andrew Grigsby. Could you just state your name and affiliation? Yes, hi, Andrew Grigsby. I'm with Viridian. OK, perfect. I also see that uh, Alyssa has joined. Can you state your name and affiliation? Alyssa Latucci with Franklin Energy. OK, Ben Nichols. Hi, Ben Nichols with Yardy Systems. All righty. Thank you, everyone, for bearing with us. Is that everybody? Anybody who hasn't announced themselves? All right. That should serve as compliant. So we can move forward. Uh, all right, over to you, Hadja. Thanks. Great. Thank you so much for joining us today. So I am going to be going over the statement of needs. I'm going to reshare my screen again. Okay. Okay. So thank you so much again for joining us today. I am the Home Energy Rebuild Programs Manager at the Virginia Department of Energy. The Virginia Department of Energy will be seeking two types of services from a prospective program implementer. The first type of service sold is going to be the development of the applications for federal funding. And the second type of service is going to be for a program implement implementer to request implementation services. Now let's go over the development of applications for federal funding. Since the Inflation Reduction Act was signed into law, the U.S. Department of Energy has released guidance for states to apply and deploy rebates across the nation. The guidance and other supporting documents published by the U.S. Department of Energy will require states to submit a state application that details how they are going to use rebates. The program implementer will be guiding efforts to develop application material while ensuring that material abide by federal regulations. It should be noted that the vendor will be helping for both the homes and the HERE programs. However, Virginia Energy will be the only entity submitting the applications to the Department of Energy. Now let's go over uh, the second part of the services that we're looking for, which are about the program's implementation. After approval from the U.S. Department of Energy, the contractor will deliver all activities mentioned on the application that are related to the deployment of the rebates. The contractor selected will have the option of subcontracting with a third entity, as needed, of course. Other tasks will include evaluating progress on implementation and remuneration of the contractor would highly depend on approval of the U.S. Department of Energy at each stage of the application process. Based on the performances and the impacts of the program, DOE shall release the uh, funds in tranches. There is specific reporting requirement identified through the financial assistance reporting checklist, which are attached to um, the aware agreements. There are other actions the program implementer shall expect to take uh, and Virginia Energy is not including detailed program requirements in these RFP. However, um, yeah, yeah. However, based on the internal and external stakeholder feedback to date, Virginia Energy will anticipate prioritizing a program design that furthers the objectives that are listed in the RFP. Um, would you have any questions regarding what I just said? No. I think we can go ahead and start from the top. Like, um, 
Mm -hmm. Like Jackie said, we'll go page yeah. by page. And uh, before starting the question period today, I just wanted to recognize that um, several folks have submitted questions already. And you know, we've been getting guidance from uh, the Department of General Services uh, procurement team on um, this whole solicitation process and today's conference. And what they uh, really stressed was that um, y'all have a lot of knowledge to bring that we didn't know in development of this RFP. And so your questions are to help us make the RFP better. Um, and so we really appreciate the questions. They've already um, prompted us to consider things that we just didn't know we needed to consider um, that will be reflected in the addendum. So thanks for those of you that have already submitted uh, and for the questions that you'll have today. Now I'm going to go over each page um, asking any questions that you might have. So uh, we will begin with the cover page, of course. Would you have any questions on page one? Okay, I'm assuming um, so that's to clarify no. is are we already pushing back the due date to May 31st? Did I hear that right? It it will be because anytime there's a question that serves that we need to add an addendum to it, that automatically throws the opening 10 days. So okay. from the yeah. Thank you. And it could be more if we have questions later on after we post these. We hope not, but if there's something that comes up, it could throw it 10 more days. But we're hoping by having this that we'll get all the questions out and not postpone the opening any longer than the 31st. OK, thank you. Kaja, one okay. thing I'm noting, does it, it looks like you do have the PDF version of this open in another tab. Sometimes the yeah, the the pages can be a little different. So perfect. Let's let's use this one. OK, so I'm going to move on to the second question. Would you have the second page? Would you have any question about the second page? OK. And uh, this is uh, the page or the third page and list the table of contents and the attachments. I'm also going to go over all the attachments of the RFP after uh, we're done with this one. So any questions on this part as well? OK, so let's go to the purpose and background section on page four. Any questions on this part? OK, um, page five of the RFP, mainly on the statement of needs. Would you have any question on this page? And pretty much the first part of the statement of needs. Hi, this is Allison with IEM. I'm not sure if it's exactly on this page, so please forgive me. But I was curious from the implementation standpoint um, of the program, will the vendor be required to carry a contractor's license along with any insurance or bonding requirements? Thanks for the question. I think, Jackie, unless you feel really confident that's a clarification, we can note that one. For this type of duty, I wouldn't think there would be a need for insurance and bonding. What about um, a contractor's license? Would that be needed? We can check on that, but I would not think so. Okay. Thanks so much. Okay, if you don't have any questions on this page, I'm going to move on to page six, which is the second part of the statement of needs. Would you have any question in here? Just because yeah, we're going to be responding, sorry, um, 
just since we'll be responding in writing, I do want I'm I'm noting questions and I want to repeat them just so we're capturing uh, exactly what the questions are. Uh, so the person who asked that before, is it correct to say is the um, contractor uh, capital C contractor required to have a contractor's license and is there any bonding or insurance requirement for the contractor? Does that capture your question? Okay. Yes, perfect. Thank you. Sure thing. Yeah, okay. hi, this is Aaron Gold with Honeywell. Uh, just a quick question. Do parts one and part two have to be bid together or can they be bid separately? Um, I know we they can be put together, I believe, because at the end of the day, like these are kind of like all the requests are of the services, but any other like uh, requirements are going to be detailed like in the other parts of the RFP. So this is just to give you an idea of what we are expecting you to do. It's not actually the content of the proposal. Is the question whether we will accept proposals for only part one or part two? I, I guess the question is, do we have to bid both? Um, to get, do we have to bid both or can we just bid part one or part two? Mm -hmm. um, we're only accepting both. Okay. Proposals Thanks. covering both part one and part two. Great. Thank you. Jackie, and as you can tell, we're, you know, the uh, processing um, while we're going here. Jackie, I should note that question, right? And we put it in the addendum. Yes. OK, so the question is, is a, an offerer um, able to propose, submit a proposal only covering part one or part two? Does that cover the question? That does. OK, okay so I'm going to move on to the next part, which is the, uh, the proposal preparation and submission instructions. As you can see here, we're starting by the instructions and also the project management approach. Would you have any question with that? There's also a beginning of the program delivery approach, of course. OK, I'm going to move on to the next page. She's still um more about the program delivery approach, the market transformation approach, and also the marketing education and outreach approaches. So would you have any question? This page. Okay, let's move on to the other to page nine product consumer protection approach the community benefits approach experience and organization as well would you have any question from this part Okay, I'm moving on to the data security and privacy approach. And uh, small, small women on a minority owned business status and subcontracting. And also the pricing schedule, which is at its beginning stage. Do you have any question on this page? I'm moving on to still the table about the pricing schedule. It's continuing. Um, would you have any question on this content of the table of the pricing schedule? Hello, I have a question. This is Mike from Honeywell. Um, so this is just regarding pricing. So, so given the pricing, uh, or the program design will be defined more thoroughly within the application process. Um, 
and, and it's subject to change, um, can pricing be would pricing be able to be updated after the award to reflect the changes that are made during the application process and approval by the DOE? I think we're, as you can probably imagine, taking a conservative approach to providing any concrete answers um, that. Like preliminarily, yes, that makes logical sense, uh, given the nature of the RFP, um, but I'm going to note the question and we'll we'll issue a you know, more final official response uh, in the addendum. Um, so can you restate your question uh, one more time? Yeah, so given the program design uh, will be more defined within the application process and submission to the DOE um, and is also subject to change, um, can pricing be updated after award um, to reflect any of those changes that were made? Thank you. And Jackie can correct me if I'm wrong, but the preliminary response is uh, just recognizing that uh, there is almost always a negotiation process as well that um, could lead to some adjustments in the pricing from what's submitted in the proposal documents. Jackie, do you have anything to add or is that? No, it, I mean, that's why we're doing a proposal here, so it could be negotiated, so. Great. Thanks for the question. Thanks. I guess I'll follow up on that. Uh, you go to it on another page, but one of the evaluating criteria, it's Kevin Cooling from Incline, sorry, is pricing schedule. Um, so points are awarded for the pricing that's provided. If if offers are able to renegotiate their prices after they are selected, um, what's to stop us all from just saying that we'll do this at a <laughs> at a low price and then renegotiating our price later? Is that pricing? going to be used and are we going to be held to that pricing or is that criteria um, a little squishy I guess well based on the submittal um, I mean because like I said we're doing a proposal things could change but what we'll do is based our top three or four companies on what has been submitted and see which ones that fit our need and then we can work with them on that I'm not saying you know, the pricing can go up or down. We'll just have to see if it's responsible. <coughs> or... But we'll we'll go more detail once she does the amendment. Could you uh, help mm, if you're at a computer? Could you help me out just by putting that question in writing? So yes, we don't have to like workshop it. <laughs> I want to capture it right. Thank you. Um, you know, one thing that I think we'll note in the official response is just the the points that you'll see uh, for and and maybe Haja, if you can go down to um, down to oh sorry we haven't gotten to evaluation criteria but you will notice that um, you know the the pricing schedule points are five as compared to you know the other categories. Thanks for the question. Okay, I'm going to move on to page 12, which is going to show the last part of the pricing schedule and the beginning of the evaluation criteria. So, would you have any question about this page? Okay, I will be moving on to the second part to the next page, page 13, which is a continuation of the evaluation criteria, the beginning part of the reporting and delivery instructions. Do you have any questions in here? Yeah, hi, this is Dave Gellman from VEIC. I've got a question for you. I just want to make sure that uh, I want to find out if you can verify that the contractors will be seen as contractors and not as sub recipients under this program makes a big difference in federal financial structure subcontractor versus sub recipient thanks 
Thanks, Dave. I think we can take that one today, but we'll include it in the you know official list. It does state earlier page. I don't remember um, that per federal compliance per the award with DOE, the contractor will be a contractor and not a subrecipient. It doesn't actually say and not a subrecipient, but that's implied. Thanks. Just wanted to verify once and for all. Thanks. Appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. Um, I'm just going to restate that question. Um, can Virginia Energy confirm that the contractor will be a contractor for federal award purposes? Does that work? Yep, that's good. Thanks. OK, thank you. I'm moving on Having, to Kevin, the uh, one more or a couple more questions here. Sorry, Kevin Pulliam from Incline. Um, I have some questions around the small business requirement. First, uh, it appears that a small business would need to be the prime in order to receive the full 20 points. And if any other business was a prime, they could receive at most 75% of the 20 points. Is that correct? Yes. Repeat. Okay. Oh, yeah, sorry, Jackie. It it's worth being careful. Can you repeat that so Jackie can confirm? Okay. Um, it, it, the only way to get the full 20 points is if a small business is the prime. And if, if any other business or a DS, DS, DSD certified small business is the prime. And otherwise, uh, they could not take it only receive 75% of the 20 points. Is that correct? Is that is my understanding of that correct? Okay. So if you're, if, if you are a, SBDSD business, you will get the full 20 points, whether you're minority, small, woman, uh, minority, you'll get the 20 points. You don't have to be all certified, just one of the certified to get the points. So uh, does the prime need to be the certified entity or could any participant in the in No, the, the contract prime. Be? Prime has to okay. be. And, and the kind of strange thing here is it looks like you could have a prime who was a small business, but they only did 25% of the work. Would they still get 20 points in that case? If the prime is certified BSDSD, they get the 20 points. If they subcontract out, they'll have to do a subcontractor's plan. Right, but if they subcontract out, does that cut back on their points? So if, if no, you're a small no. certified business, okay. Uh, and so that there's no limit, there's no requirement in order to be a prime that you do more than 50% of the work, I guess is the, is the bottom line question. No. Okay. And then my last question here is that um, the, the entity that does that certification, SBSD, uh, has indicated that it takes 60 days for them to review an application. And so even if an application was put in the day that this RFP was released, the, the eligible companies would not be certified by that point. Um, are you willing to put some language in that they uh, be certified within 60 days of the uh, of, of the date or something that would allow for folks to get certified here? I don't know that there's too many small businesses that are in this niche that would otherwise qualify if they're not allowed to, to, to qualify. Alternately, they also indicated to me that if uh, if you all called them and told them that um, there was a need for certification to happen faster, they would do that. But that was the only way they could do that. So if you're willing to do that, that would solve that also. But I think um, otherwise, th there's no way for you to get small businesses in if they're not already certified. If your application's in, and we could call, but if you don't have your application in, you know, I don't think, I mean, because we'll tell them that we're in the middle of this proposal and if they can hurry your certification on, we would be gladly to do that. But you'd have okay. to send the email and let us know that your application has been completed. It is in for review. Thank you. All right, I'm just going to review those to make sure I captured the essence of your questions. First, is it correct that the prime offerer would need to be a, what's the official DSBSD designated uh, entity to qualify for full points um, under the SWAM 
evaluation criteria? Yes. Okay. And then next, is Virginia Energy willing to put in language that would allow a an entity, um, I guess it has to be a business, undergoing DSBSD designation to qualify as DSBSD for the purposes of this RFP? Next question, is Virginia Energy willing uh, to mm, contact <laughs> um, DSBSD to mm, speed to speed, speed up application an application to... review, speed up the application review for a pending application um, for a prospective uh, offerer. Does that capture yeah, it? Those are all accurate. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Thank you so much. OK, if you don't have any more question, I'm going to move to the next page, page 14. Which is like a second part of the reporting and delivery instructions. Would you have any page, any question here? All right, I'm going to move on. And as you can see, we have the remaining section about the reporting requirements and um, a glimpse of the general terms and conditions, um, general and special terms and conditions, actually. So any question in here? Okay, I'm moving on to the uh, last part. It's going to be the method of payment. Yeah, hi, it's uh, Dave Gelman again from VEIC. I have a question on this one. Um, notice that you've set things up for quarterly invoicing. Just wondered if you are willing to consider monthly invoicing. Other states that have been doing this have seen specific questions on that. For example, Pennsylvania has recently responded on theirs that they are indeed considering monthly uh, invoicing because again the idea is that the the prime contractor has to basically carry the cost of all of the payments for the rebates during the period until they can invoice thanks thank you dave the question is is virginia energy willing to consider monthly invoicing Kevin's going from incline. I'll I'll back that up and also say is is the uh, are you willing to front the rebate funds so that the uh, companies don't have to float those because the companies will have to pay interest on that. That'll be passed on to you. So if you were able to front the funds so that they could be provided in some kind of escrow account that is drawn on, um, then there'd be more available for rebates. So simplify the question: Is is the uh, agency willing to to front? The rebate funds to the opponent. Sorry, what was the end of the question? It, um, or was it just is Virginia Energy willing to front the rebate funds? But that's it. Yep. Um, and it is helpful that you provided like an example, like e.g., via an escrow account. Is there any other e.g. you would want to add? Uh, that would be it. Yeah. Okay. It's helpful to hear that as you know, other states are considering um, different ways of doing things. Um, can you, do you have anything to share that's public um, about another state that is taking that approach? Uh, I don't. I know that it's just a, a topic that has been asked by every implementer in every state, <laughs> I think, because this, the cost okay. is pretty significant if you look at the prime rate and multiply that by, you know, four months that, that you have to wait for getting that money back. It's, it's in the several millions of dollars in interest costs that the implementer is absorbing. And of course, that just gets passed on. Yeah, thank you for the question. OK, so I'm going to move on to the attachments. Sorry, this, one, okay. sorry, this is Joel Squealing from Eflin. Just a clarification, too, as you answer the question about the quarterly, again, in 
if you decide you will not front the rebates, can you at least provide clarity as the quarterly related to both admin and rebates or one or the other? Should we amend the well? And if it's OK with the person that submitted the original question about monthly invoicing, should we amend it to say is Virginia Energy willing to consider monthly invoicing for rebate and or administrative funding? Correct, if that's OK with VEIC. Yeah, I yeah, mean, Dave. I, how, however, however, this can be improved, I think, is the uh, desire here from all of us is that quarterly by itself is a burden. Um, if we can subtract, you know, if we can split out some of it, that would certainly be helpful too. Thank you. All right, so I'm going to the attachment now. So it's just going to be one of the first attachments. Please bear with me while it's loading. All right. This is attachment one, the required general terms and conditions. Um, I would like to ask if you would have any questions on this first page of the attachment. Okay. I think we're allowed to ask just about the whole attachment, right, Jackie? Okay. Yes, don't do page by page of all the attachments. Just do it as attachments if they have any questions per attachment. Okay, okay. Because okay. so I'm sure they've had time to look at them. Okay, so this is like the entire attachment in here. Would you have any question in here? Okay, I'm moving on to the other attachment. Okay, attachment number two, the special terms of conditions for the terms of the Commonwealth of Virginia. Would you have any question for this attachment? This is Andrew Grigsby with Feridian. I had submitted some questions earlier about attachment two. Should I? Do you want to hear them now or, or, or will they show up in the document? Did you submit you said, them today? Uh, did you, send, did you direct ago. them to me? I did. OK, they've got I've, I have sent all those over that will be included in the document. The okay, addendum. Yeah, Andrew, you're welcome to verbalize them now if you'd like, but they will be in like we we're capturing them. Well, yeah, I'll go ahead and express them. Some uh, other folks may have thoughts. Uh, in this uh, attachment two, it says that 42% of purchases shall be, are, is the goal of uh, those from small businesses. And one of my questions is, do the rebate dollars themselves that households claim, are those considered uh, purchases by the Commonwealth? Because those households may, for example, spend them at a big, big box store on appliance, or they may hire a contractor, a large or small contractor, to do insulation work. Uh, another question. Jackie, you don't want to, yeah, I think. I was just allowing Jackie the opportunity to say anything, but we're, are we going to address that in the um, addendum? OK, cool. Sorry, Andrew. That's fine. Um, and the, the second question, um, and this sort of goes back to a question asked earlier about uh, should the uh, prime uh, have insurance? Um, this states that the prime contractor is fully liable and responsible for work done by its subcontractors. And the question is, are, are uh, 
uh, installers, to use a different word, hired by households using rebate dollars, are they considered subcon subcontractors uh, to the prime? Uh, the, the, an example might be, would, would the, must the prime implementation contractor assume all liability for the performance of the heat pump uh, installed by a, a contractor using a tier rebate? Yeah, thanks for the question. You submitted that one, right? Correct, yeah. Okay, great. That's it. Okay. If and if no one else has a question, I'm going to move on to the third attachment. Okay. This is a uh, inflation reduction act special terms and conditions. Would you have any question regarding that? It's a pretty long document. I'm going to scroll down very quickly. Okay, so I'm moving on to the other attachment. Attachment for proprietary confidential information identification form. Do you have any question on this page? Okay. Attachment five. Would you have any question for this one? Yes, two pages. Okay. Moving on to the next attachment, which is attachment six. Any question on this page? Okay, I believe that's the end of it. Yes, we have exactly six attachments and we went through six attachments. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen now. Okay. I think that's it. Um, thanks everybody, really appreciate your questions. We will work as speedily as possible on that addendum. And Jackie, do you have anything, any closing remarks? Nope, I'm good. Okay, well, it is April 18th at 1251, and everyone gets a break before what I'm sure is your one o'clock meeting. Uh, really appreciate it, or whatever time, in whatever time zone you are. Uh, so have a great day, everybody, and thank you so much, Jackie, Aaron, Haja. Um, for your partnership on this. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.